So in these labs, it's generally very beneficial when students can talk directly to me, their lab instructor, and also talk directly to other students. So this video is going to be about how we're going to try to reproduce that online. So to begin with, right now I'm looking at the Moodle website for Surrey. I've also got the Richmond site open in a different tab, and it looks almost the same, but not exactly the same. I'll explain the differences in a moment. And up here at the top, we've got the lab period video conference. I'm actually going to talk about this in a little bit, because I want to talk about something else first. If you scroll down the page a little bit, you'll see that one of these click to open sections is called group study rooms. So what are those? Well, let's click into it. So you click in here, and you see a whole bunch of video conferences set up. So I've called these study rooms. And these are set up such that when you join one of these, you join as a moderator, not as a student. And that means you don't need to wait for an instructor to show up. The session starts as soon as you show up, or a different student does. So you can join and leave these video conferences at will, and they're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the duration of the course. So you and other students who are in this course can use these spaces to work on the labs, or to work on assignments, or to work on labs and assignments for other courses, or to study for tests, or even just to socialize. So within reason, you can use these spaces however you want. They are intended to be student spaces. So these rooms are to facilitate group study, but of course that's not super helpful if you don't know anybody in your class, which is probably true for most of you. You haven't met anybody in this course yet. So I've got two ways to help you meet people in your class. One of them is up here. There's a forum for finding study partners. So if you click into this, you can click this button to add a new discussion topic. So you could, for example, start a discussion that just says, does anybody want to work on assignment three? I'll be in the Surrey group study room seven at 3 p.m. on Tuesday. So you could start a discussion like that. By default, everybody in the course is going to be subscribed to these forums, which means you'll get emails whenever somebody starts a discussion topic. Now, if you're getting too many of these emails and you want to unsubscribe, you click the little gear icon and you can unsubscribe from the forum and then you won't get any more emails about these discussion topics. So that's one way of meeting people in your class. The second way you can meet people in your class is one that I'm going to inflict upon you. So what I'm going to do is for every lab, including the first lab, I'm going to assign you two partners and a study room. And during your lab period, either 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., you and your partners would go into that study room and ideally you'd start working on your lab together. And then you can talk to each other live while you're working on things, or if you decide that it's more convenient for you all to work some other time, you can exchange contact information or set up a different time to meet to work on your labs. But every week I'll give you some study partners and a study room, and the next week I'll give you different partners. And that way, over the course of the semester, you'll meet a wide range of your classmates. And I really encourage you to treat it as a networking opportunity. So really make an effort to get to know people, make friends, find study partners, and just generally be friendly and inclusive. Because ironically, it really does help you academically to make some friends, not just so that you can study together, but also so that you can de-stress each other just by chatting. Now that's how you get to know fellow students, but of course when you're working on your lab, you're also probably going to want to talk to me every now and then. You'll get stuck, either individually or as a group, and you might have some questions for me. So how do you ask me questions? During the lab period, there's this lab period video conference, and I'm going to be here for both of the lab periods. So you can drop in during any of these lab periods, regardless of when your lab period actually is, and you can ask me questions in real time. So if, for example, you and your partners are all down here and you're stuck, you can just all come up here, log into this video chat, and talk to me. And in fact, you could stay in this video chat and just continue working alongside me if that's what you prefer. Also, if, for example, you log into your video chat and your two lab partners say, we really need to work on an assignment, actually, can we meet later, and they disappear and you're all by yourself, then you may as well just come up and join me here. And there may be some other students in that position, and you can form a little group with them. So just to recap, down here there are some study rooms. These are student spaces. You can use them however you want, within reason. There's also a forum for finding study partners. I will also be assigning lab partners to you, different people each week, so that you can get to know different people in the class. 
And during the lab periods, you would be working with those partners in these study rooms, or you can leave these study rooms and come and join my video chat up here to ask me questions directly. Now remember that I said that the Moodle page for Surrey and Richmond look a little different. The main difference is that instead of having your own video conference here in Richmond, I've actually given you a link that takes you over to the Surrey website instead. So you just come over to the Surrey Students Moodle page and you can join this video chat here to talk to me. So I won't actually be in a video chat on the Richmond site, I'll just have the one on the Surrey site and the Richmond students can join me there. The reason why I'm doing this is that currently there's about three times more Surrey students than there is Richmond students. So it makes more sense for me to just have everybody join together on the Surrey site. I have set things up so that Richmond students can join the study rooms on the Surrey campus and vice versa. Surrey students can also join these Richmond study rooms here. So you can freely mingle with anybody from either campus as long as they're enrolled in the class. So now we want to talk about the dark side of collaboration. Collaboration with fellow students is incredibly useful when it comes to learning a new subject. So when you learn something from somebody who's kind of at the same level as you, they often can explain concepts to you in a way that you're better able to understand relative to how your instructors explain concepts to you. Likewise, when you teach something that you figured out to a fellow student, that often forces you to really crystallize in your own mind that concept. So even though you already understood it, by teaching it to someone else, you often wind up with an even better understanding. So like I said, collaboration is incredibly valuable when it comes to learning a new topic, and we do want to encourage you to do it. But as I said, there's a dark side to collaboration, and that is plagiarism. So in the past few years, we've unfortunately had a real problem with plagiarism in this course. I've had to write up about a third of my students for code plagiarism, and your course instructor also has been writing people up for plagiarism on assignments. So it's been a really big problem, and unfortunately that means we have to take a really hard line stance against it. So we do actively check that your code and your assignments are not plagiarized, and we do write up every single instance of plagiarism that we find to the dean's office. So just be very aware of that. We are checking for plagiarism and you always get written up for it when we discover it. So that said, I wanna give you a really firm understanding about what's allowed and what's not allowed. Because like I said, collaboration with your fellow students is incredibly valuable. I do want you to do it, but I also want you to do it in such a way that everybody's learning. So I want you to collaborate, but not to copy. So the general rule of thumb is just never share a copy of your code with another student. So don't email out a copy of your code to any other student. Even that by itself is considered academic dishonesty, even without copying. Even just sharing things is considered over the line. Now obviously there's some situations where you would want somebody to look at your code. So for example, if you've got some problem with your code, it's not working, you've stared at it 50 times and you can't see what the problem is, you might like somebody to look at it with fresh eyes and see if they can spot the problem. In those situations, email it to me. So go ahead and email it to me and say, these are the error messages I've got, this is my code, can't figure out what's going on, can you see the problem with it? So I'll try and help you in those situations, but the point is, email it to me, not to a fellow student. So I can look at your code, other students should never get a copy of your code. And of course, the next issue is, if you can't share code ever, then how do you discuss your code? How do you collaborate on writing code if you can't actually show one another your code? Well, the first thing is that you should talk about it. So get into those video chats on the Lab Moodle site and actually discuss what you want to do, how to create the code and make it work. So you might be saying, okay, I made a switch for this and then I have another function that handles that. So talk about it with each other. Another thing you can do is to share pseudocode rather than code. So you could just write, you know, if the LED is not true, turn the LED on, else turn it off. So writing something like that is excellent because you can share your logic with your fellow students, but they still have to be able to write their own functional code at the end of it all without any help. And that's what we want. Everybody's supposed to write their own code independently, but you are allowed to talk about how you actually structure the code and get it to work. So just to summarize, you can send code to me, not to other students. And if you want to discuss code with other students, you should either discuss it verbally or just use pseudocode. So never share your code with another student. And remember your job here is you want to help your fellow students learn. 
not pass, not get good grades. Those are just happy side effects of learning. But you want to make sure that everybody learns so that at the end of it, you can all write your own code independently without help. But you are definitely allowed to get to that point together.